ignorance and deluded karma beget future existence. Okay, so that's cause and effect. All phenomena are subject to constant change and thus are impermanent. The, um, uh, this is the practice about the awareness and the mindfulness. And most of the time when things changes, we do not know and thinking that is permanent in nature. And this is about the four inverted views. And that's the delusional in the thoughts. Uh, we create karma and the enlightenment law of cause and effect. And this is all deviant uh, understanding. Uh, that's the nihilism, for example, thinking that uh, there's only one life theory. Such a mindset of ignorance gives rise to thoughts that never abide. So in Master's explanation, though we continuously listen to the Dharma, there are still so many external phenomena that cause thoughts to arise in style of minds. And this is the part uh, I would like to relate back to my uh, earlier sharing with you all and how it ties up. And it's about knowing but lacking understanding. So we can listen to Dharma and say we know, for example, the Four Noble Truth, we know about the Four Noble Truth. When things arise as an external phenomena that cause about thoughts to arise, we've totally forgotten what the four noble truth. That means we are lacking understanding as a result of that. Then we don't control our body and mind take action. With our mouths, we say things we should not say. With um, our body, we do things that we should not do. This is because our still, there is still ignorance in our minds, even though there uh, could be, you know, the Dharma you understand uh, the Dharma, but lacking in realization. And when that happens, and you're not, you, we do not know what we're doing. <clears throat> we don't realize what we are doing. So we need to go through is to understand this, we need to go, go through what you call self-realization. So ignorance means that we have not taken Dharma to heart, uh, which is why our minds give rise to delusion and us to karma, so it must the same. So, when we do that, leading to karma, that even when we have realized, we could apply the realization into practice. So um, knowing is not good enough, understanding is not good enough, realizing is not good enough, we could apply that in our practice. So ignorance is not understand, it's not understanding the principles of the Dharma. So we may understand the Dharma, but if we do not understand the principles behind the Dharma and apply that, uh, in the Dharma, then we will not be in practice. So we are not in practice. How then can we purify ourselves? So all these things will still be residing in within the six consciousnesses and will not get higher beyond the six consciousnesses. So when delusions arise, we create karma that begets future existence. So therefore, that's why we need to rise above that, grow in our consciousness. Uh, to be able to purify that so that we can uh, determine uh, our destiny, our future destiny. So we're in control, we're in control of future destiny instead of letting uh, our karma and our mind to control our destiny. So we constantly focus on the limited self and forget the law of karma. Thus, we cannot experience a true dharma of the greater self. So this greater self, that what it is, the greater self, I mean limited self and greater self, is this limited self is all within the six consciousness, within the six consciousnesses. And the greater self is the one with the higher consciousness. So the state of practice, now it's obviously must have heard about the story of the monkey king in the uh, monkey king in the king of Varanasi. Uh, and this is the story about a deviant belief and a deviant practice. But all this, uh, it's important to understand that this deviant practice once gets into it. That's why once one so have tried into a wrong path, uh, it's not easy to get out. It may take lifetimes to get out. So therefore a wrong understanding, same thing, whether understanding, whether realization and practice. That's why uh, I've shared with you all before, that the three more important things to get in the right path, the true teacher, the true teachings, and the true study uh, to be on the, on the right path. All phenomena are empty and still in the nature. The ultimate nature of all phenomena is what well form sound or taste. So this is where there are countless kinds of different things. There are phenomena, all forms, appearances, and born, beings born and living every day. So we all encounter this daily in a life, moment to moment. And um, 
so despite us um, knowing that Dharma, uh, it's not easy because when one goes out there, we are bombarded <clears throat> by all these things, phenomena that comes before us. So like a seed, there's nothing uh, for us to see, but quietly sits there. And yet it's a potential to sprout. And, and so the intrinsic nature of phenomena is empty. So it's the emptiness uh, of all phenomena, as well as emptiness um, of the skandhas. So phenomena is about our self. So we need to be mindful of that. So the lessons we learn is that we need to watch out for our five views of five acute afflictions, uh, as well as the five chronic afflictions, which are the ten afflictions. So it's all, without, unless we have, the, this is the one way we need to, the fundamental um, things or factors we need to address in ourselves. And because without this, even if you know the Dharma, even though I know the Dharma, uh, it's not going to help me very much because my affliction will just overtake me. I won't be in practice. So, but at the end of the day, we cannot take anything but our karma in the next life. So it is a truth of suffering and a cyclic existence. So if we can't address this, no matter how much we learn, we go still going around in circles. So noble and enlightened beings are in a different states. The difference is that noble beings um, have eliminated all their afflictions. Even for, for the hearers, they have eliminated because they already uh, understood and realized and in practice of the truth of suffering. So the four noble truth. So four noble truth is about ending the, the those causes. So when 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 they come back and enlightened beings come back and noble beings come back, they're free of afflictions. So they're free of afflictions when they come to the samsaric world, they are not contaminated by the affliction we have. So but the only difference is that we are unlike un unenlightened beings. So when I'm still here, I still get afflicted um, by all these external phenomena that come to us. So for the noble beings that we uh, that we strive to attain in a body sort of vows, that's what we have to do. So, so that's a reason why Master said, we have to clear all these afflictions so that when we do come back to serve, um, we do so without being contaminated by them. Uh, so we must remember that all phenomena are subject to constant change and thus impermanence. And we should understand that very clearly and not create karma out of delusion and deny, deny the law of cause and effect. And this is the consciousness of our practice that um, and, and, and unless we grow up and elevate our consciousness of practice, um, we, we could be very good in our knowledge, but when it comes to practice, uh, we can easily be shaken um, by, what, by what comes before us. So in contemplation, uh, a short one, so therefore, I must just say is that um, we need to realize the truth of existence. What's the truth of our existence? What is the actual true universal truth of existence? The truth of existence is the delusion of existence. On relationship, the mind that seems real is false in existence. Isn't it that my master keeps telling us all the time? The mind moves and seems alive, but so, but so does the wave in the ocean and the trees true, though they do not possess a mind. The mind is dependent on the body. Without the body, there's no consciousness. So why then should one hold on to a hurtful thought in a relationship? Okay, Kanan, brothers, sisters, thank you. Yeah, Kanan, Kanan, uh, brother Chin, uh, awesome, awesome sharing. Uh, uh, brother Chin, I think you have advanced uh, into six, chapter 637. Today we are in uh, 636. Uh, you've gone uh, one, one, one day ahead of us. <laughs> uh, it's okay, then we will go back to 636 on Wednesday. But anyway, tomorrow is a full moon day. Uh, so we won't have our teaching class uh, tomorrow. We will have a special session uh, with Sister Effie uh, uh, who joined us as well. You know, uh, okay. Uh, uh, before Brother Chin and the team leave us, uh, can we take a group photo? Uh, yeah, 
everyone please on your video. Yeah. So. Tomorrow is uh, this morning when I woke up, I saw a big bright round moon greeting me. Yeah? Depending where you are, I think the moon is a very brightly lit, radiant moon. Connected by the same moon, yeah? Yeah, we're all connected by the same moon. And we're all connected and by the same sister moon also. Yeah, sister moon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Karen, so much, Brother Chin. Yeah, Karen. Okay. 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 Next, uh, can we have uh, Brother Chris to share? Morning, Brother Chris. Uh, good morning, uh, Brother Robert. Uh, good morning, morning, everyone. Yeah, missed the uh, sharing just now. Just uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. This morning, uh, after a couple of days break, it's a bit difficult to get back again to the routine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, must I say the workings of the mind are empty and illusory. But uh, we still think as though things are permanent and we always have the time. Right? So when you get a little bit lazy, we always think uh, like what the Brother Joe Huang say, you know, never mind, I'll make up for it tomorrow. But when tomorrow comes, you say, oh, uh, something else is a bit more important. So you put it off for another day. And this is how we, uh, we lose, our, lose our time and our, and our diligence. Yeah, when we start spiritual uh, uh, cultivation, that was a good start. But with spiritual cultivation, we also uh, we also uh, form aspirations. But the problem with the, this is that when we start having aspirations, we start doing uh, things. We find that uh, expectations start to creep in, you know, without us knowing it. So we want to have. Uh, recognition. We want people to pat us on the back and say, wow, you are doing so, <laughs> so well. Right? Wow, what good work and so on. So these are the things that we have to watch out for because our ego and arrogance starts to emerge. Right? We may be doing some good work, but that doesn't mean that, uh, uh, that we have achieved anything much. You know, is how people perceive us. So we have to keep our, we keep being humble and we will keep our uh, ego and arrogance uh, down, right? no matter how much we think we are doing. So each of our minds, even though we think is a, uh, uh, is is not much, but when it comes to collective uh, karma, when everybody thinks in improper ways, that's when you know our collective karma creates this sort of worldwide disasters around in the world. So it's important that uh, each one of us have to do our own uh, thing, make sure that our mind is not crumbling like the old house. Right? So we have to keep uh, maintaining it right? and don't let it crumble and uh, you know, fire starts and then uh, the disasters are virtually unstoppable. That's my sharing this morning. Yeah, can I, can I uh, brother Chris uh, sharing this much? Okay, next, uh, can we invite uh, brother Tzu Wei? share the insight for today. Good morning. Good morning, Brother Robert. Good morning, morning. brothers and sisters. Yeah, I think very, very brief uh, for, for me because uh, the question is uh, why, why, why? You know, that uh, It's like uh, uh, 
how come it's still in the same uh, state you know that uh, supposed to have uh, improved so i think back to what brother jin was sharing actually it's very clear uh, knowing but uh, do not really understand mm. if i understand do not really realize and even if realize do not really practice i think this is the the answer to my why 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 and uh, finally still go back to permanent still holding on to the permanent and still go back to self holding on to the self the ego which uh, brother Chris uh, just mentioned yeah so uh, I don't know I think every every minute every second needs to <laughs> come back to Dharma and hold the uh, the principles of the Dharma in in the heart in the mind yeah that's all my sharing can I yeah, and then, and then Brother Zui, for joining us. Yeah, sharing. Yeah, I think we need uh, Brother Zui is calling for Sister YY now. Yeah, why, why, why? Yes. <clears throat> Maybe we have uh, Sister YY now to come <laughs> join yeah. us to share. Okay. Thank you, Brother Robert. Morning, uh, morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, grateful for all the great sharings, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, today, what I could uh, absorb, wow, Master mentioned uh, so this one uh, in spiritual, spiritual practice, uh, the most important thing uh, is the mind. Yeah, then we have to take good care of it. And, and so much mentioned on that the three principles of four states uh, be it our mind, matter, and the body going through the process arising. Uh, the mind uh, ever changing uh, uh, and of course uh, whatever formation existence decay and disappearance so all things all material things are actually impermanent and changing so again the the advice constant advice don't hold on to attachment and put a stop to our craving because the start is actually uh, uh, is all the karma uh, created is inseparable from desire. Must have put a lot. Uh, put a stop and put an end uh, to all this. Uh, and what we need to have is the, the compassion heart of the tatakata. This is what I heard. Wow. Self-discipline is very important. Remain reverent. And we, we, we have to experience our life. This is based on experience, walk through the path, right? So, uh, the be grounded. We have to be grounded to walk the path and, and not in the middle of the air. <laughs> not in the middle of the air. So, that stabilizing of the mind, I think these few days must emphasizing is so important. Of course, uh, the 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 key uh, uh, spiritual uh, practicing tool two would be the three flawless study. Uh, so I all this emphasis. Um, and today, when uh, uh, Master mentioned about this, uh, uh, everything is impermanence and ever changing. Uh, what I heard is more relating today is to our. In, in fact, it's actually to the, our planet. Uh, yeah, the, the description uh, oh, crumbling and rupturing. Yeah, to the analogy for the tree ram. This is a great reminder. Yeah, it may take, take time for this to happen. Even the, the, the planet is so fragile, even though it will take a long time you know, to go to the end of the process of the, the, the four states, yeah, but it is undeniably happening. So it's a awakening call to us, lah. yeah, the loving the, the planet. I think I, this is what I heard uh, today, the call. And when talking about the mind, how powerful the mind is, yeah, whether we are creating disasters or blessing, to the world is all up to us, uh, like what Sister Kaping mentioned. We decide, and whether we also want to be a noble being or an enlightened being, still to remain. 
this is all in our mind. So Master mentioned when we form the mind going through the process of uh, arising, uh, abiding, changing and ceasing when we first form our expiration, initial expiration now. Because over time, time passes, of course we subject to a lot of challenges that affect our spiritual practice. So here, uh, to, uh, to, so of course the message is for us to be really firm uh, in our path. And even though the mind, the working of the mind are empty and illusory, the thing we uh, we of, and definitely we have Dharma mentioned this is empty and insecure. Oh, home, oh yeah. So uh, let's fill the mind, you know, with Dharma, and then there is this a uh, true suchness in it. So we have to go through the discovery channel and rediscover the Dharma in our mind. Yeah, this is what I heard today, Kan. Yeah, can can so much, uh, Sister Wai Wai, for wonderfully uh, sharing. Uh, shared uh, always, uh, Sister, and very joyful as well to listen to the Sister Wai Wai every day. Oh, and sorry, so brother. One more point, brother. The one, the yes. rubbing of the the sticks uh, and the all the rocks, uh, you know, to get the spark and ignite the fire. Wow, oh, this one we don't clash and fight with each other, uh. I think this is another point. It reminded.